Here's to a great service. Woohoo! Good Coffee. morning. Coffee, the nectar of the gods. I hope you enjoyed your extra hour if you live in certain parts of America where you could get. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think Arizona ish, some states. I... Some states don't do it. Yeah. But our state, we did. We got an extra hour. It's like, how did I get ready without an extra hour? I sure needed the whole thing. Yeah, you took I? the whole thing, didn't you? I did. Took the whole so thing. I even got up early. Even got up early. Yeah. I mean, literally. So. <sighs> Hope everyone had a nice Halloween. Time is a weird thing. Time it is, is a weird, weird thing. thing. Saw the uh, nice uh, full moon. Yeah, first good. time since World War II that yeah. we had a full moon. So yeah, I'll tell you. Hi Marlene. Hi Lori. Hi Christian. Good Everybody morning. Watching. Good morning. Today, today, good morning. Today, 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 Fun today, stuff today. today. Hi Valerie. Can't wait. Fun stuff today. Really? Good stuff. Yeah. I can hardly wait. I, well, I know. Didn't I just say that? I think you did. I did. Okay. You got fun stuff too. I got t-shirts and sweatshirts. They're fun stuff. They're, they can't have yeah. um, I may be wrong, but it's highly unlikely. You need that shirt. I may have to. Or you need a shirt that says, I, I made a mistake once. I thought I was wrong, but... I was wrong. Yeah. Uh, I do not scare easily. I have daughters. Uh, everyone is born right-handed. Only the gift to overcome it. And yes... I know they pick on you at school and call you names, but you still have to go. You're the teacher. Sorry, teachers. Yep. Don't worry, I can fix it. You need a shirt that says that too. I do. A lot of teachers are just grilling us in their classrooms. I know, they are. They are. Um, I can explain it to you, but I can't understand it for you. And. I may need to get this for you. The Sermonator. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I would wear that. I would wear that. <laughs> On Sunday. The Sermonator. The Sermonator. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> Arnold, oh, Lord. be jealous. <laughs> okay. Um, we do have a call from Patron Saints by the name of John Lennon and George Carlin. Yay, George and John. Yay, George and John. John says, we've got this gift of love, but love is a precious plant. You can't just accept it and leave it in the cupboard or just think it's going to get all by itself. You've got to keep watering it. You've got to really look after it and nurture it. Truth. Yep, it is true. Sometimes we nurture one another. We do nice things for one another. We do. Yeah. Try it. Yeah. Here's a bumper sticker I'd like to see. Oh, this is George. A bumper sticker I'd like to see. We're proud parents of a child whose self-esteem is sufficient that he doesn't, he or she doesn't need us promoting his minor scholastic achievements on the back of our car. Bumper sticker. It would. It would. Okay. No bird soars too high if he soars with his own wings. We do not see nature with our eyes, but with our understanding and our hearts. True. Kindness is the sunshine in which virtue grows. Ooh. I yeah. like that one. Yeah, nice. No, kindness is a superpower. Kindness is a superpower. Things that make you go, hmm. Hmm. Uh, there is only one success, to be able to spend your life in your own way. Hmm. Nice. Yeah. You cannot do a kindness too soon, for you never know how soon it will be too late. <laughs> yep, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Ralph. We just we just Ralphed. <laughs> Yuck. Yuck. <laughs> In our family, that doesn't mean anything. But yeah. Uh, Unless of course it does. Tootsie Rolls were introduced in 1896 by Leo Hirschfeld. He named them after his daughter, whose nickname was Tootsie. Tootsie. My parents used to call me Tootsie. Yeah? Yeah. I why? Don't know why? I don't know. Thought you looked like a little turd, or? I don't know. That would get me in trouble. Um, Remember that kindness and nurturing yeah. <laughs> thing? I think you just. I think I just blew it. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Little kids asking silly questions. If plants need rain and sun to grow, and rainbows are made of light and water, are rainbows plant food? They're people food. They are. Why do spiders run away when I fart? Smart spider. Why did swear words get invented if we're not allowed to say them? Because some people do it anyway. Yeah. Daddy, why are you buying beer? Do you, do you know how much candy we could get for all that money? Did you know God can't even kill ghosts? What's up with that? If FedEx and UPS were to merge, uh, would it be called fed up? I believe five out of four people have trouble with fractions. How come you never hear about gruntled employees? Just disgruntled. Yeah. If quitters never win and, never, ne and winners never quit, what fool came up with quit while you're ahead? Good question. No. Do Lipton employees take coffee breaks? People mm. want to know. I'd like to know. Acquiring minds. I know. I know. I'm getting really low on jokes. Send jokes, honey. Send jokes, please. Several men are in a locker room of a golf club. The cell phone rings on the bench. Uh, on the bench rings, and a man engage, engages Sit, the no, hands. No, no. Start over. Start over. You lost me with that. Several men are in a locker room of a golf club. Okay. Got it? You're sure? Yeah, I got that. Okay. A cell phone on the bench rings, and a man engages the hands-free speaker function and begins to talk. Everyone else in the room stops to listen. Hello? Honey, it's me. Are you at the club? Yes. I am at the mall now and found this beautiful leather coat. It's only $1,000. Is it okay to buy it? Well, sure. Go ahead if you like it that much. I also stopped by the Mercedes dealership and saw the new 2005 models. Um, I saw only one I really liked. Well, how much? 90000 Okay, but for that price, I want it with all the options. Great. Oh, and one more thing. The house I wanted last year is back on the market. They're asking 950000 Well, then go ahead and give them an offer of 900 They'll probably take it. If not, we can go the extra fifty. dollars um, It's really a pretty good price anyway. Okay, I'll see you later. Love you so much. Bye. Love you too. The man hangs up. The other men in the locker room are staring at him in astonishment, mouths agape. Then he make uh, he smiles and asks, "Anyone know who the phone belongs to?" Sound that one coming? Yep, I know. I know. <sighs> That's for me. Yeah. Why is it up like that? It's not supposed to be that high. I don't know. Okay. Do you I guess I'll shut up and get out of here so Jan can take over. Bye. Nice seeing everybody. Or nice being seen by everybody. That's get out. Yeah. <laughs> Just go. take my coffee. And take leave. your coffee and scramble. Around. No, the dog's actually laying down behind you, not even on the couch. Not even on the couch. Mm -hmm. Just right behind. I can't you. see you. Jan, right, right there. Oh, right behind me. Right behind you. On the floor, right behind us. That's very cute. Very sweet. So good morning. Um, now that Phil's done with his frivolity. Let's do some serious stuff, shall we? So, where to start, where to start, where to start? Let's just start with the fact that um, daylight savings times, we have to change our clocks. Do y'all get your cha clocks changed? I hope you did. <clears throat> and it reminded me of the fact that there's a lot of changes going on right now. And with that, I was reminded of one of the spiritual laws is the law of impermanence. Everything changes. Things change. Nothing stays the same. Now, sometimes we can stay stuck, but that's a whole different thing than the world around us, situations, life changes. So, <clears throat> what to do about all of that? Because that changing world is, uh, can be distressing. But even the good stuff changes. You know, we can have a really, really good day and then twist our ankle. And then it's not so good, right? So even the good stuff changes. 
The key for us is to not hang on to either the good stuff so that we be, miss it and regret it and be, begrudge it when it shifts into the negative stuff or the stuff that we don't enjoy as much. Because sometimes the stuff that we don't enjoy as much is rich with blessings, it's rich with uh, insights and information, some really good stuff can come out of that. You've heard me talk about the best worst thing. The best worst thing is when you experience something really not fun, but when you get through it, it opens the door for something that's wonderful that you wouldn't have been able to experience had you not had that other experience first. So that's why we call that the best worst thing. So it's the worst thing, but it was best because it really blessed us down the road. So being able to adapt to the changing world is extremely important for us. This adaptability is a learned spiritual skill. And it's not something that you're born with or you're not, it's learned. We can teach ourselves how to be adaptable. And part of that adaptability is recognizing the truths here, the truth of the fact that things are gonna change. If you don't like what's going on today, just live with it, allow it, experience it, and know that tomorrow could be different. It might be a different that you don't care for or don't have a preference for, but it's different. And that too will shift and change. But here's the key. Here's the interesting thing that I wanna share with you. There's a very cool verse <clears throat> in Matthew, Hebrews, Matthew, <laughs> Hebrews, not even the same book. And I've marked the page with my little, I love you, that was written by Maggie. She's so sweet. So that's how I marked this page. Anyway, <clears throat> so Matthew chapter six, verse 17 and 18. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> so, this is one of those challenging verses because it doesn't flow like a regular person would talk. So, so it's kind of like chopped up and backwards. So hang in there with me, I'm gonna read it to you as it is and then I'm gonna put it together so it makes sense, okay? So in the same way, God, so you have to look at the verses ahead of that to see what the same way about was, but. That's another story we'll get to another day, perhaps. But for now, God, desiring even more to show the heirs of promise the unchangeableness of his purpose, interposed with an oath. So there's, this is about having an oath. This is a promise. That in order by two unchangeable things, in which it is impossible to, for God to lie, we may have strong encouragement we who have fled for refuge and laying hold of the hope set before us. Okay, what does that mean? So he's talking about two unchangeable things and he mentions one. Because the verse before that, he mentioned the other unchangeable thing. So the two unchangeable things are this, the unchangeableness of his purpose and it is impossible for God to lie. And then a corollary verse or a similar verse also marked with a Maggie Bookmark, this one says, I love you so much with little hearts. Bless her little Maggie heart. This one is James chapter 1, uh, verses 16 and 17. 16, do not be deceived. Okay, what's deception? Deception is when our perceptions are not in alignment with truth. That's when we're deceived. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. So in other words, hang on to the truth. Uh, Christopher Turner, uh, Beth this morning posted uh, something on Facebook that uh, Christopher Turner had read his uh, a poem, Circle of Friends. In that message, he talked to that particular message where he read that poem, he talked about fear as being false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. So false evidence appearing real creates deception creates us being deceived and generates fear, does it not? So in order to stay out of fear, it's important to know the truth of it. So in, if we shift this into a positive statement, is know the truth of this, beloved brethren, 
and sister in it. I don't think that's a real word, but we get it. Every good thing bestowed and every perfect gift is from above, coming from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. God is all love, all the time. That's the unchangeableness of his purpose. And it's impossible for him to lie. So he can't tell us a falsehood. He can't that is going to make us afraid. So we get to be in this state of truth and understand that. So when in this changeable world where everything is never the same two minutes in a row, we get to hold on to the truth of it. That God tells us that he loves us and he can't lie. And his purpose for us is for us to rejoin him, that ascension path. He wants us to ascend and be with him on that ascended level of awareness, that expanded awareness. That's the truth of it. And when we hold on to that, it doesn't matter what we're physically experiencing. It doesn't mean we like it. You know, I had, to, had a rough week this last week. I don't know about you. Did you have a rough week? I hope you did not. But if you did, I get you, because I had a rough week this week. And everything from physical <laughs> discomfort to mental discomfort to emotional discomfort. And through all of that, I had to keep coming back to this point. That every good and perfect thing comes from the Father of Lights. He's not, it's not shadow. He's not sending anything negative. It's my perceptions that are clouding it and making it negative. And I could receive a healing for that negative mindset that I got trapped into. Oh, it's not pretty, it's not fun, I don't like it. Because it makes me cranky. And who wants to be cranky? I know some people are addicted to being cranky, but that can change. You can change if you want to. That's the law of impermanence. We don't, we don't have to stay stuck if we don't want to. Because life is a choice. It's all about choice. If there was no choice, that there wouldn't be any difficulty in the world at all, because sometimes somebody else's choice makes my life world, my life difficult. Sometimes the choices that other people make make my life difficult. But that's choice, and then I have a choice of how to respond to that. That's where my power is, and if I get caught up in discouragement and fear, believing that false evidence. If I get caught up in the sorrow of it all, then I'm trapped in that. But I can shift. I can shift out of that. I prayed about that and went to bed cranky, prayed about it. Oh, lift this from me. Woke up the next morning, felt great. The law of impermanence, it can shift, especially if I'm willing to allow it to shift. Make sense? So in this world where everything is shifting all the time, we're shifting all the time. Have you ever ch changed your mind about something? Of course you have. I've changed my attitude my mind about a lot of stuff. I've decided I'm going to go and oh, got distracted. I'm going to do that over there. <laughs> do that. that happens a lot, does it not? That's changeable. That's part of this human experience we have is everything changed. The law of impermanence. I, this was really brought home to me when I took a yoga class. I can't remember the name of the yoga class, but it was where you get into a position and you hold it. And you hold it. And you hold it. And you hold it. And the teacher would say, just hold on just a little while. This will change here in a moment. But for now, you can just hold on. And I could. And you, you, the body may have whined a little bit about it but I had more flexibility when I was done. So even the difficult things can bring about some positive results. Everything changes. So whether you're happy right now or you're sad right now, the key is being able to allow that to change and not be angry because, oh, I was happy and now I'm not. But just allow whatever you're experiencing to, to be what it is. Powerful stuff. And the key here for a lot of us is to let go of old pain and old sorrow. Sometimes we carry that stuff around. We, we hang on to it. We hold on to it. Sometimes we worship it. 
sometimes we cherish an old wound and we drag it around with us and anybody who's willing to listen, we will share that old wound with them in minute detail, keeping it alive and active in our awareness. Why do we do that? It causes us pain and suffering. We do that because we're almost addicted to it. But just like any addict, we can change should we choose to. We can shift if we choose to. And I've talked to you before about um, it's hard to let go, just to let go, but it's easier to hold on to something new. So if we can hold on to the truth of God's unchangeableness, then that allows us to shift out of that, to move away from hanging on to stuff that no longer serves us. It certainly doesn't serve the people around us because people get kind of tired of hearing the same old story. And we tell it with such a vivid accuracy, do we not? At least our side of it is with vivid accuracy, so we think. But allowing ourselves to adapt, to move, through the changes, to move through life's circumstances, and being able to let go of the stuff that doesn't serve us anymore, that weighs us down. Wouldn't you like to just let go of stuff? I know there's a ton of stuff I'd like to let go of. And it takes conscious effort. Now, not effort as far as efforting, but it takes conscious choice. And sometimes that's repeated. Sometimes it, the stuff comes back up again, and up again, and up again. But the really cool thing is, is each time it comes up, as I release, I'm letting go of a whole nother layer. And soon it comes up and it's just a, just a memory. Not an anguish, not a trauma, not a regret, not a sorrow, not a pain, just a thing. And that's when I know I've healed. So this being able to be adaptable is a healing tool. I want us to utilize that healing tool to uh, allow ourselves to be more resilient. When we can adapt here and there and allow the changes to happen around us, that increases our resilience ability. Being resilient is extremely powerful and a part of our ascension path. It's that rigidity and structure has to be a certain way that keeps us locked down. But this ability to adapt, flow, get into the flow, allows us to access a higher level of awareness, a deeper sense of our own personal value and spiritual power. And I want you to have all of those. I want you to have that. Rather than being stuck in fear, I want you to have this resilience that grants us so much more. So here I'd like to share with you a guided meditation that will help us with this resilience, this adaptability, uh, and the ability to release and let go of old suffering. Are you ready for that? I know I am. So in order to do this guided meditation, how am I? Oh, I'm good. <coughs> Pardon me. So for this guided meditation, I take a little extra time to get into that meditative state. So in order to do that, I'd like you to focus on your heart space right now. Just bring your awareness here. Your awareness isn't stuck in your mind, stuck in the brain cavity <laughs> there. Um, it, it can travel where you let it. You can bring your awareness to a specific part of your body, maybe that's hurting, bring an awareness to that. And if you bring kindness with that awareness, compassion with that awareness, sometimes the pain eases up. We've tried that before, we've done that before, it works. So now, just to let you know that that's part of the possibility of what we can do with our awareness, we're gonna take our awareness to our heart space. Now, when I say heart space, I'm talking about this whole core uh, energy field that supports us. Often we'll get a ring true in our heart space. Often we'll get a ring true in our guts. 
when our guts and our heart and our mind are in alignment, it's golden. But sometimes our guts are, mm, no, I don't think so. And our heart's going, yes, I want that. The brain's going, I'm not sure how that's gonna happen. So <laughs> to bring them all into alignment is a beautiful thing, is it not? So let's start with the heart space and just be with the truth of who you are. No right or wrong, good or bad. Just, you exist. And that's the truth of it, right? I am, I am Janice. I live here in this physical form. My awareness inhabits this physical form. My spiritual self inhabits this physical form. Now bring your awareness into your guts. Same thing, I am, I exist and feel the truth of that. Sometimes when we carry stress, it hits our guts really hard and being in this state of truth that allows them to relax and rest and be at peace because we're kind of fraught with, I don't know what's gonna happen next. I need to know and I don't know and it's scary. Just be with being here, right here, right now, be. I am. And just be with that. Once you hear the dog, I don't know if you did or not, but she took a big sigh too. And now bring your awareness into your mind. I am. Oh, I'm in my awareness. I am aware of my awareness. That's a powerful place to be. And now feel how centered and balanced that feels. We're going to ramp that up. We're going to ramp that up by allowing ourselves to open even further to our divine connection, that living light of love. So with that awareness, we're gonna open portal at the top of our head and let that living light of love stream in, in our mind and around our body. Just letting that living light of love stream in and around us. And centering into that unchangeableness that, that nature of God that is all love, all light, all the time. <sighs> letting it touch our mind, letting it touch our heart, letting it touch our guts. <sighs> and now bring all of that love and light through your whole body. Let it from your heart go out into your hands, from your heart and your guts, let it go out into your legs. And you may have a sense that there's discomfort in your being, maybe that worry or that fretting of current changes is cluttering your world. Be aware of the bottoms of your feet and open those portals up. And this worry cannot exist in the same space as the living light of love, it can't. It's like you turn the light on, darkness has to vanish, it has to. It cannot exist. So as you, as you just turn the light on, this darkness cannot exist. It's gotta go somewhere so you can just let it go out the bottoms of your feet. And Mother Earth will take it. And she's very loving and caring. She'll just receive that and transmute that. It's just energy to Earth. It's just a, a tiny bit. Of, and if you think of the whole big Earth with this teeny tiny little speck and we have a tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny little energy of negativity, let it go. Mother Earth can handle that. She's got it, let her have that. And in exchange now, she's gonna send you this stabilizing strength. You'll feel the power of the core of the earth and you'll feel the solidness of the rocks in the earth and you'll feel the, the living energy of the plant life on the earth, the potential of all of that. Let that flow up and now fill your intestinal space. Feel that strength in there. No room for stress and anxiety there now, just strength, power. Bring that into your heart space and bring it into your awareness. And now you have this beautiful balance between this living light of love and the structure and strength of the physical realm. How wonderful is that? And it feels so good to be balanced, does it not? There's more work for us to do. 
let's take a little journey in our mind's eye. So I'd like you to take a little walk with me. We're gonna find our way into a forest. Can you imagine a forest? Can you create a forest in your imagination? Pine trees, maybe you can smell pine trees. Maybe it's a forest where there's uh, deciduous trees and the trees are all turning colors. It's fall right here, right now. Maybe in your imagination it's summer. Then you could have a sense of that. Whatever you imagine is what is right for you at this point in time. Allow that imagination to be what it is. Although you know you can change it with your intent, with your will, with your knowledge and your understanding. So whatever you're experiencing, allow yourself to find your way to a forest and you're found a way onto a forest path. And this forest path is gonna lead you past a stream. Follow the stream upstream to the source. And as you're walking along this pathway, it feels beautiful, glorious day. Birds are singing, sun is bright in the sky. Maybe there's clouds and it's just the right temperature for you. It feels beautiful and wonderful, and you can really enjoy that. Maybe there's a gentle breeze, feels lovely for you, just the right temperature. And as you're walking along, you see that this stream now opens up into a big pool of water. And at the end of the pool of water is a waterfall. And as you're walking up to the waterfall, you see that the trail goes behind the waterfall and you're allowing yourself to walk behind the waterfall and you walk into, step into a beautiful grotto. Beautiful grotto. Perhaps it is like the blue grotto in, oh, I forgot what country that's from, um, where, the, where the water is blue and the, the walls of the cave or grotto are blue. It's just fantastic. Or perhaps your grotto has uh, vivid red overtones or brilliant yellow overtones, or maybe it's green overtones. Whatever <clears throat> color you're experiencing may have significance for you. So just notice and just feel how good it feels to step into that light, to step into that grotto. And the grotto is big enough. It's not a cave cave, it's just an open space. <clears throat> it's big enough for you to step into. And at the back side of that grotto, there is an altar. <clears throat> and this altar is made up of one of three things. And you get to choose what you see, what you experience. Now again, notice what appears for you, as I mentioned them, or pick one. Either way works. Either way is just fine. It's the same. And we value the fact that spirit can sometimes give us a visual. It's a blessing and a gift. And sometimes spirit asks us to make our choice. That's a beautiful gift, is it not? So do you see or choose a golden altar, a wooden altar, or an altar made of light? Which do you see? Golden, wooden, or an altar made of light? And as you're noticing that, this altar is not for, it, this altar is here for you to take an old sorrow, an old pain, an old regret, an old suffering, and lay it on the altar to let it go. Sometimes it's easy to say, I want to let that go, but it's hard to let go by visualizing the experience of putting it there, that's giving our subconscious mind permission to let go on a higher level. So what helps this is again using that, uh, the spiritual power tool of symbolism. So how does this pain resonate for you? Is it a knife in the chest? Pull it out and lay it on the altar. Is it a burden on your back? Pull it off, lay it on the altar. Whatever it might be for you. Is it a full body distortion? Scoop that out and lay it on the altar. Whatever you perceive, however that registers for you, 
is your subconscious mind giving you a tool by which you can free yourself? Is it, is it chains? Is it uh, bricks? Whatever comes up for you. I'm giving you a few suggestions, but trust what comes up for you. You have this ability within your subconscious to create for yourself a symbolic object that represents that old pain. It might help to focus on one particular pain. We have lots probably, <coughs> whether it's a betrayal or a, a, a wounding or, or a regret, something we did or did not do. Allow that to be, to be something that you can physically, symbolically release. Maybe somebody hits you. So imagine a hand in, and place that on an altar. Maybe you hit somebody else. Imagine your hand on the altar. Whatever that symbolism is, whatever you have a regret, a sorrow, or a trauma about, remove it from your physical form, however that looks for you, and lay it on the altar. And sometimes these things are kind of stubborn, and they're deep physically in our body. And sometimes, so you may have to work it loose and pull and then lay it on the altar. Whatever that looks like for you. This is simple, easy stuff. But with your intent and your expanded awareness, so powerful, powerful stuff. So take that wound. We probably already have. I've been talking a bit here because I want people to really get this. Take and lay that on the altar. And as you lay that on the altar, it's no longer yours to carry. You can pick it back up again if you want. Let it go. And by laying it on the altar, what you're doing is you're allowing God to have it, divine source to have it, higher power, whatever that is for you. You're allowing divine attention to focus on that. Because divine attention can focus love and light on that in a way we cannot. And that love and light will dissipate that, evaporate that. It's no longer an issue for you, no longer a sorrow or a suffering for you. You can let it be. Let it be, let it be. Just allow that to be there. I know that however much time it takes, God's got that. Divine Source has got that. In the meantime now, notice there is something at the base of the altar. A symbolic object has been left for you. Now you may have <coughs> chosen a golden altar and the object that's left here is wooden. You may have chosen the wooden altar and the object that's left here is, is energy, an energy uh, field of some sort. <clears throat> Whatever it is, it's all right. Notice that it has symbolic um, information for you. Maybe it's just a sphere of light. Excuse me. Maybe it's um, <clears throat> a golden tear. Maybe it's a wooden cross. Whatever is shown to you has deep spiritual significance for you. Now, when we break here in a moment, I'm going to give you some interpretations if you'd like. But know the truth of this, your heart knows this because this is communication between divine source and your awareness. Your conscious and subconscious mind, your higher level of awareness is communicating with spirit and that's the source of this gift here. You know what it means. Now I'm gonna make it easy on you and give you some hints here in a few minutes, but really, you know what it means. You know what it means to you, okay? So take your gift and you can leave a gift. You can leave a flower, you can leave a, a tear, you can leave a, a little note. Leave something here as a symbol that you've been here, an acknowledgement that you've been here, you've done the work, you've done the process, and you are grateful for that. So leave your gift of gratitude and allow yourself to take one more look around you in this beautiful grotto. 
feeling this healing energy that's coming your way, whatever color it might be. Allow yourself to step back out of the grotto, past the waterfall, past the pool. But as you look at it, it's, it's no longer a pool of water, it's a pool of light. And follow that stream of light back down the path, back to where you first encountered the forest. From the forest, back into your physical form, back into the here and now, and back completely awake, re revitalized, rejuvenated, and energized. Probably higher energy than you've had in a really long time. So you might want to wiggle fingers, wiggle toes. Welcome back. And Mr. Phil, if you'll join me up front again, we'll do our communion. <clears throat> and then I'll get back to the interpretations of our experience today. I hope you enjoyed that. I know I did. <clears throat> Communion. This is a tribute to Jesus for being the first one to take that ascension path and do it right. He did it with love and passion and compassion, and he paved the way for us. So we can be grateful for that <clears throat> experience and that journey. Join us in prayer, please. Loving Spirit of Light, as we take this into our physical form, help us to take on our ascension path. Help us to walk with grace, walk with peace, and walk with joy. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Mm. Join us in prayer again, please. <clears throat> Loving Spirit of Light, as we drink this in, help us to drink in life. All of it. Help us to be able to adapt to life. Help us to be able to shift and embrace every moment, whether we prefer it or we don't. Allow us to be in a state of grace in this journey. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> so Beth's not here. She usually is one that does the uh, link link to donate contributions? Uh, I'm sure she can do that later. Maybe somebody else will do that for us. <clears throat> we replaced a water heater this week at, at church. Believe it or not, the one <laughs> we have to get them inspected every single year. Uh, Probably the state a good thing. requires it. Yeah. yeah. It's a good so thing. we saw a leak and we looked on it. He said, "Well, this thing is over 30 years old, so we replaced it." So, so when we get back to the building, we'll have a brand new water heater. And it'll be a smaller one and really keep that water nice and warm. Wonderful stuff. So Hopefully. thanks for Roy and Jimmy for getting that done mm -hmm. for us. Much appreciated. Anything else we need to know? So anyway, no. your donations are greatly appreciated. Life goes on. Yeah, Even though we're not in the building, the building still is there <clears throat> doing its building thing. Still is doing its building thing. So <clears throat> if you have any questions about your guided meditation, type them in. Hey. Would you mind getting that got cold? It's a bit cool. If you would mind. <clears throat> In the meantime, I, I will. That silly dog, she's still right behind you and not asleep, just wide away. Well, she was snoring a minute ago. Oh, was she? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Could you hear her, hear my dog snore behind me? Anyway, she only snored for a couple minutes there. Um, anyway, wanted to share with you what the different altars represented. I'll give you that information first, and then I'll take your individual uh, experiences from there. <clears throat> so the golden altar, this is letting you know that the wound, whatever wound that you laid on that altar, whatever wound that was, uh, thank you. Do I have time to get you. myself some coffee? Or yes, do you do. Okay. Yeah. So whatever wound you laid on that, this really damaged your self-esteem. So by putting this on this golden altar, this is going to lift up your, your self-awareness. 
It's going to lift up your ability to acknowledge who you are, to honor your own journey, to honor your own path. Does that make sense? I hope it does. If you, if you chose the wooden altar, or if that's the altar that you saw, then whatever wound or regret or sorrow, whatever trauma that you put on the altar, on this wooden altar, this lets you know that it really affected your sense of feeling safe in the world. Being able to trust others, being able to trust yourself, being able to, to move <clears throat> effortlessly through this life. So as you left something on this altar, this is going to free up your ability to feel empowered and safe and vulnerable at the same time. So you can be real. You can be real. You don't have to make everybody else's world okay. All that people pleasing, you can release that because a lot of that is just because we don't feel safe in our own skin. So this is allowing you that ability to feel safe in you, who you are, the I am. <clears throat> if you're, if you placed whatever sorrow, trauma, whatever on an altar of light, <clears throat> this is letting you know this, this damaged your spiritual awareness, your spiritual awakening. So as you laid something on this particular altar, this allows you a deeper connection to spirit, a deeper connection to being grounded in this physical realm <clears throat> with an expanded awareness so that you can be more fully on your ascension path. So I hope that that, that information is really helpful for you. So now <clears throat> I'm sure there's uh, people that have, I see questions here, I can't read them, but I see questions here. So Mr. Fizz, let's see if you got that. Yes. So, what have we got here? We got Marlena. Okay. And uh, she, she also saw the uh, Blue Grotto, uh, you know, off of Naples, I was telling you about earlier. Oh, Naples. Yeah, I forgot. I was there <coughs> 16 the first time. Oh, uh, cool. The portal light was crystal encased in gold. Good. The Blue Grotto was, uh, you know, the one uh, on the Isle of Capri in Italy. Mm -hmm. The altar was crystal. Crystal. Okay, that'll carry the same energy as the altar of light. Okay. Uh, laid down a copy of her family tree with a knife on top of it. Okay, so let me get that part. So this is inherited trauma. You know, we inherit energetically uh, uh, and, and genetically old trauma. So you just laid all of that out there. You don't have to carry any of this stuff anymore. And the knife was how it is hurting you now. So you can let all of that go. You're not carrying any of the other old stuff. Maybe you didn't even recognize that it was uh, from your family history, but it's, it's, the buck stops here. The energy stops here. You are clearing that uh, ancient history. Okay, anything else? Uh, the gift underneath the altar was a brass bell. A brass bell, okay, so now, You'll have a ring true that is ringing true for who you are, not what your family created. So you get to follow your own pathway, your own ascension path, and be guided and have a clearer ring true of what's right for you. And? And she left a red rose. It's all about love and passion. So now you have a renewed passion for living your life. How beautiful is that? Wonderful. I, I think you're, this is one of those pivot moments in our world. And I, I think things are gonna have a big shift for you as a result. Okay, who else, Phil? Uh, Sandy, um, gold altar, knife and heart, dissolved on altar. Okay, so this is an old um, personal wounding that affected your self-esteem. So this could be a betrayal, this could be hurtful words, whatever, but it'll, it, it's dissolved. So that's beautiful. What else on that one? A filled hole in the heart with love. Oh, wonderful. Self love and appreciation. Yes, which is the purpose of that golden altar, yes. Took a bouquet of lavender. Okay. Left a note that said, I am Sandy. 
Oh, wonderful. So you're reclaiming that true identity. Beautiful. And the bouquet of lavender. Lavender is very healing, very medicinal. So this is allowing you to heal yourself and be an instrument of healing for others. As you can see how others have been wounded in the past and you can be helpful in their healing as well. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, Scott. Uh -huh. Saw a sapphire blue grotto, black onyx uh, altar with chains. Okay, so <clears throat> the black onyx. Uh, this, you know, often we look at black onyx and we think, ooh, dark. No, um, well, it is dark in color, <laughs> but it's not got dark energy. It's about grounding. So part of the, the energy of the altar is how it altered you in the wounding. So how it altered you in the wounding was it took away your sense of being grounded, your sense of purposefulness, your sense of uh, being really here. So you may have a sense of have felt disjointed or dislocated from this world sometimes, and that's because of this old wound. And the chains are often relate to, it relates to the links of a wounding can create a different wounding, can create another wounding, and they add on to each other. But they all have that same energy, and that same energy is disassociating from that physical form. So this allows you to get back into who you really are and really be here, fully present in your own life. So wonderful. Anything else? He got a small marble with a flaming heart and left love. Okay, so. The small marble with a flaming heart, this is, marbles move. They shoot them and they go, they roll. So this is being able to go with, roll with the flow with your heart. Let your heart be the guide. Let your heart help you roll through the things that are challenging for you. And then, uh, what did you give back, love? So, so again, you're being gifted with this adaptable heart and you're gonna be able to utilize it. You have the willingness to utilize it. So that's beautiful, wonderful. Okay, what else, Bill? Uh, Mary. Yeah. Well, Mary had a change in life, of course. Hopefully all is settled now, so she's doing well. Um, she had a wooden altar. Okay. Uh, released and laid down a persistent fear. Good. The gift was a rustic metal ball. Uh-huh. And she left a realistic brass starfish paperweight Oh, how fun. Okay, so the wooden altar again, that's about uh, whatever you experienced helped created um, a sense of feeling unsafe. And so leaving that fear is going to leave you, is it going to allow you to feel safe in your body, safe in your skin, safe in your life? That's a wonderful thing. The rusty, uh, rusty ball. Um, let me ask on that one. Okay, so a this rusty bell. a rusty bell. Oh, okay, all right. So the rusty bell is letting you know that you're going to be able to reclaim a sense of your own truth of things, rather than being influenced by other people. You're going to be able to trust your own self. After that wounding that that created you to feel unsafe. You're going to have the safety now of being able to trust that you're on the right track, you're on the right path. And what did she leave? Uh, the, the starfish. Starfish, yeah, brass, realistic, paperweight. Okay, I got to turn the heat off. I'm roasting. And sorry about that. I probably said metal ball instead of bell, so that okay. was my fault. Okay, okay. Um, the starfish. Starfish relate to be the star that you are. And starfish are very healing. They can lose a limb and then they regrow it. So this is healing energy for you. And it's the ability to just shine. It's okay to shine. You're safe to shine. You're safe to be acknowledged for who you are. What a beautiful thing that is. Okay, what else? Um, Allie, uh, her altar was brightly lit granite. Okay. She left a golden heart-shaped locket. 
Okay. And left a large white feather. Okay, so let's take that back. Uh, the granite, um, okay, so what I'm hearing on this one came through really clear, uh, is asking you to not take your life for granted. Ha ha ha. Ow, ow. But uh, allow yourself to have gratitude in everything. Gratitude is going to be a superpower for you. It's going to open doors and open your mind and open your awareness on lots of levels. I'm hearing that you already are doing that, so keep it up. This is a confirmation for you to keep it up, that that light is bathing that for you. The other energy of granite is that strength. You're stronger than you know. You're stronger than you think you are. So this is going to amplify that awareness of your own strength, and it's going to give you the ability to be even more grateful. You already have it. It's going to come even better. Uh, and then what did she leave? Or uh, what was she gifted and what did she leave again? She, um, uh, where to go? Okay, um. Sorry. Hold it. Sorry, the computer keeps doing weird things over here. What the heck is going on? Because I can't remember. Okay, there we go. Okay, sorry. Um, the uh, granite altar. So, uh, left a golden heart shaped locket and, le and left a large white feather. Okay, okay. And there was something else that popped up yeah, and received a golden heart shaped locket. Received a golden shaped heart. Locket. Okay, okay. So you received the golden. So this is about having an understanding of your own value. This is being gifted to you from divine source. You don't have to conjure it up. It's being gifted to you. So this is about, how can I say this? So you're you're being asked to reevaluate the judgments you've made on yourself in light of this golden heart. So it's asking you for expanded compassion for yourself, expanded kindness towards yourself. And leaving the white feather, this is your willingness to allow for angelic assistance. This is your willingness to speak your truth in love and kindness and be blessed by that. that. I hope that makes sense. I hope the words out of my mouth make sense. Okay, what else? Uh, Myrna said a wooden altar. Okay. A blue and white ghetto in Greece. So I, I presume she means gr uh, grotto. Grotto, yeah, ghetto. A uh, cold sore, not a part. Okay. It was red, crystal clear heart and left a white daisy. White daisy, okay. <clears throat> so the wooden altar again is whatever wound you're leaving here was uh, affected your your feeling safe in your own world and your own being so being able to release that was really powerful for you uh, at helping you step back into your own self-worth your own uh, safety in your own skin so what else did she the red heart oh, yeah did you do the cold heart sword Okay, the sword. Um, Out of heart. Okay, so again, this is a betrayal. Betrayals are often in the heart as a sword. Um, <clears throat> and sometimes these betrayals are other people and sometimes they're ourselves. If you don't feel safe with yourself, sometimes you might, we might betray ourselves and do things we don't really want to do because we're trying to make somebody else's world okay because we don't feel safe. So by releasing that, you're letting that go. And this gives you permission then to utilize this red crystal heart that you that you were gifted. This is being able to trust your own heart. Do what's in your heart to do, not what other people expect. Make sense? And what did she leave? Uh, she left a white daisy. Oh, white daisy. So the white daisy is significant, signifies choice. See how this all fits together? So you didn't have a choice in the past. You had to do what other people expected of you so you'd feel safe. But now you can follow your heart and you have the power of choice. You know, Daisy Zari loves me, loves me not, loves me, loves me not. It's all about choice. Yes, no, maybe. So you get to decide how you live your life. Make sense? Hope that blesses you. Just a couple more. Okay. Um, Marlene said that Ed had an altar of light. Okay. He left a note of forgiveness on the altar. Wonderful. And he left love on the altar. 
Wonderful. Okay, so the altar of light is spiritual. So there may have been at some point some spiritual disconnect for him where he didn't feel God was really there or God was really real. Um, but the spiritual altar is allowing him to not only recognize that there is a divine source, but recognizing the divinity within, recognizing, reconnecting with that sacredness within. The note of forgiveness is, is letting himself off the hook and letting God off the hook for either fulfilling or not fulfilling an expectation. So this is like clearing the slate. How beautiful is that? And what did he receive, and what what did he left the note, and then what was the last of that? He, uh, he, and he left love and a note of forgiveness on the altar. Okay, so it's all about love. And so now that's the focus of your experience from here on in is to be the love that you are, <laughs> recognizing that you are love, and you are, you are walking a sacred path. So beautiful. Thank you for sharing. And one last one. Okay. Uh, Okay. Rustic and well used. Uh huh. She received a wooden cross with Jesus on it. Uh huh. And she left three roses with thorns, a white, a pink, and a yellow. Okay, so let's see if we can get that. So the workbench here, <clears throat> what you put up here is you, ha you may have a sense that everything has to be hard work. And this has, may have created for you. A sense that if you weren't working hard, you weren't doing anything. So you get to let that go. You get to just lay that on the altar and know that God's going to do the hard work. You're just going to do the next right step. And that gets to be easy. There may be some physical uh, expression of that. You know, that it, not everything is like easy peasy. You know, it, it takes effort to vacuum. It takes effort to go to the store. It takes effort to go to work, whatever that is for you. <clears throat> but it doesn't have to be filled with efforting. You can let all that work go. You still have a good ethic. You'll do what you need to do. That's not going to go away. But the sense of feeling driven all the time, that's done with. You don't have to carry that anymore. So what was the rest of that? I got caught up in that. What was the rest of that? I didn't... I, Three roses? What is she, oh, she received the cross with Jesus. So this is a renewal of your faith. So your faith is, is being restored to you, given back to you. So in other words, amplified. So you can just rest in that faith that you have. And then the three roses with thorns. This is the ability to cause ruckus if you need to. So a thorn protects it, a rose protects itself using its using thorns. So you don't have to be aggressive and hostile, but people know mm, that's a limit for her. I'm going to back off. So you can have safe boundaries. And the three roses, there was red, white, pink, and yellow. White, pink, and yellow. So the white is purity and truth. And the pink is love. And yellow is joy. So you're not going to let anything or anyone steal those from you ever again ever again how does that sound i hope that rings true for you i hope that's a blessing for you it sounds like mr phil is on his way back <clears throat> that was a great one to end that was a great one to end <laughs> all right so we're going to close with an energy circuit. We can't do our circle because we're just us. Although Scott does say he visualizes the church and everybody doing the circle and he still does his hands this way. If that is what you'd like to do, that works too. And he's, and he's all the way in Florida. <laughs> he's in Florida. So this energy doesn't know time or space. No, so it doesn't. we can connect in however you want to do that. For now, just rub your hands together really fast. That opens these energy portals in your hands. We use those portals for healing, for transmitting spiritual energy outward. Um, so by opening them, we're awakening them and expanding their energy and their capacity to, to, to be effective. We're still in that beam of light that is in our mind, in our heart, in our guts, and it's around us. So we're still within that beam of light 
consciously bring in even more. Bring it into your heart space, from your heart space down to your left hand, from your left hand to your right hand, back to your heart space, connecting that circuit. Now, if you'd like, you can put your hands down lower and that actually makes a heart shape, but you don't have to do that. You can do it here. We're going to do it here so you can see. As that energy circuit has been completed, now the energy field within our hands is going to expand and you'll be able to feel the energy there. Well, let's play with that a little bit. Um, as that energy is building within our hands, now we can use this uh, to be of service. Maybe there's someone in your circle of influence that could use healing or comfort or encouragement or strengthening. If you're mindful of them, this energy is shared with them. They will get to sense this energy, feel this energy, and use it however is necessary for them. So just bringing that person into your awareness for just a moment. You might want to even notice if the energy in your hands shifts. Uh, mine got intense as soon as I thought of a person. So the energy is being utilized and ramping up for them. So just hold them in your awareness for a moment. Deep breath in. And exhale and release them. <clears throat> We're going to let that all go. Bring fresh, bright energy in. Heart to hand, hand to hand, hand to heart. Closing that circuit, letting that energy build again. As that energy builds, now you've got this big ball of light that you get to claim, you get to keep for yourself. So bring that into your heart space to feed and nurture you, comfort and secure you. And with that, then you can be of service in the world. May your life be a prayer. God bless. Enjoy the day.